Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed, a relatively quick update for you today on the ASUS ROG Swift PG32 UCDM, which I still think is one of the best 32-inch 4K OLED gaming monitors on the market. ASUS recently released firmware version MCM105 for this monitor, bringing with it two key feature additions, Dolby Vision support and a new dynamic brightness boost setting that attempts to alleviate some of the brightness concerns in higher APL content. So let's take a look and see what these features bring. ASUS promised Dolby Vision support for the PG32 UCDM ever since it was released, so it's great to see them making good on that promise around six months later. However, they were beaten to the punch here by Dell with the Alienware AW3225QF, which was the first shipping QD OLED to support Dolby Vision. That came along with many concerns and issues, especially around how Windows handles Dolby Vision, which unfortunately hasn't been resolved as of mid-2024. The good news is that right off the bat you don't need to use Dolby Vision at all if you don't want to. Dolby Vision is disabled by default and needs to be enabled manually in the OSD if you want to use it, in the process switching away from the HDR10 mode. The AW3225QF also includes a toggle to disable or enable Dolby Vision, but this was only introduced in a firmware update around a month after launch. Initially, there was no way to turn off Dolby Vision, so Windows users were basically forced into the Dolby Vision mode, even when the monitor should have been set to HDR10. There are no such launch issues with the PG32 UCDM, and users have full control over enabling Dolby Vision. The reason why you want a Dolby Vision toggle is that when a monitor has Dolby Dolby Vision support, Windows will default into the Dolby Vision mode for all HDR content, even if that content is actually HDR10. This means that Windows converts most HDR10 content into Dolby Vision, and with that comes all the downsides of Windows tone mapping and whatever processing the monitor's Dolby Vision mode has. Sometimes this processing and tone mapping may not be appropriate for HDR10, as we saw with Dell's monitor. Only in some cases, usually in specific full screen configurations, will Windows actually switch over to the correct HDR10 pipeline for HDR10 content. What Windows should do is output a Dolby Vision signal for Dolby Vision content and an HDR10 signal for HDR10 content. That way the monitor can be run in its correct and corresponding processing mode. But because that doesn't happen, the best workaround is an OSD toggle that can be used to only enable Dolby Vision in situations where the input is a genuine Dolby Vision signal. So why would someone even want Dolby Vision? Well, for PC gaming and general Windows usage, as of right now, this feature it is basically useless. There is virtually no support for Dolby Vision in PC games, though hopefully that ecosystem will slowly grow as more Dolby Vision monitors are released. And app support for Dolby Vision for, say, streaming services and those sorts of things, again, pretty much non-existent on Windows. The main benefits to getting Dolby Vision support are for other source devices, particularly media players and some consoles. If you want to watch HDR video content in arguably the best format, this is where Dolby Vision support is a great addition with its support for dynamic metadata. Many streaming services and 4K Blu-rays have content mastered in Dolby Vision these days. Though, thanks to Windows' crappy Dolby Vision support, you'll need to watch this content through a dedicated media player like an Apple TV Plus or Nvidia Shield or other Android TV device. The Xbox Series X also supports Dolby Vision for streaming media apps and some games. The PlayStation 5 does not have Dolby Vision support at all. If you like to use your monitor to watch TV shows and movies, as well as for gaming, this is a genuinely good feature addition and should provide additional longevity. The PG32 UCDM comes with three Dolby Vision modes, Bright, Dark, and Gaming, with only very minor differences between the three. EOTF tracking is essentially the same, with the Dark mode being slightly dimmer. Unfortunately, all three modes are capped to just 450 nits of brightness, similar to the True Black 400 modes across most QD OLEDs, and this is true for both real-world Dolby Vision content and HDR10 signals passed through as Dolby Vision via Windows. This is a bit different to how the Dolby Vision modes work on the Alienware AW3225QF, which has a brighter game mode. While HDR10 accuracy in the Dolby Vision mode via Windows is actually decent, there is not much flexibility here in how the content is displayed, which is why toggling back to HDR10 makes sense for most Windows gamers. Without Dolby Vision enabled, you can still use the modes that allow for up to a thousand nits of peak brightness. 
whereas with Dolby Vision enabled, you are essentially forced into a 450 nit cap. Ideally here, the Dolby Vision mode would have some sort of configuration providing higher brightness because without it, it's accurate though lackluster. Even for video content, it might be better to force the player to show HDR10 instead to access higher brightness, though this could be a case-by-case -case basis depending on how well the Dolby Vision version is mastered versus the HDR10 version. As for the new Dynamic Brightness Boost feature, this is ASUS's latest attempt to solve one of the issues with QD OLED panels. Right now, across all models, users have a choice. Either get an accurate image at all average picture levels that's capped to 450 nits, or a decent 1000 nit image in darker scenes, but with the compromise of dimmed brightness in brighter scenes. There is currently no available mode that offers high peak brightness and great accuracy in high APL scenes at the same time, as it appears Samsung Display have implemented some form of panel dimming in the peak 1000 mode across QD OLEDs once average screen brightness exceeds about 40 nits. It's still unclear to me why there's this limitation, but we've seen it now across the QD OLEDs I've tested, and that's prompted recent changes to how we measure real scene brightness. With the Gigabyte Aorus FO32U2P, Gigabyte provided a third configuration that was neither of the typical True Black 400 nor Peak 1000 configurations. This third option was optimized for bright scene accuracy, preventing panel dimming without sacrificing a thousand nits of peak brightness. The trade off was that darker scenes were significantly over brightened, to the point where some scenes would be more than twice as bright as they should be, hurting shadow detail. However, especially for games that have few dim scenes and largely take place outside in bright environments, this new third configuration might deliver the best experience and avoid the dimming that some buyers have complained about. The PG32 UCDM's new Dynamic Brightness Boost introduced with firmware MCM105 is essentially the same thing but with a slightly different implementation. The end result though is similar to how the FO32U2P works in its bright gaming HDR mode. As a refresher, this is how the console HDR mode performs normally, which is basically unchanged in the latest firmware. This is with Dynamic Brightness Boost disabled, providing similar performance to other QD OLED Peak 1000 modes. You'll notice good EOTF tracking accuracy for lower APL content, so darker scenes, but much worse accuracy for higher APL content, brighter scenes, with noticeable dimming. When Dynamic Brightness Boost is enabled, EOTF tracking is significantly different. Now, for smaller window sizes, there's significant levels of overbrightening through the middle and upper parts of the EOTF range. This isn't as much overbrightening as you get from the Gigabyte model, but it's still to the point where some dimmer scenes are twice as bright as they should be. Meanwhile, for larger window sizes, EOTF tracking is closer to accurate, though some aspects are either too dim or too bright, depending on the exact parts of the curve we look at and what specific curve. Generally though, for brighter scenes, this combats dimming and you get closer to the expected accuracy. In real scene brightness, this causes a trade-off compared to the HDR console mode without dynamic brightness boost enabled. This new setting combats mid and high APL dimming, causing just a 6% deviation in our tests compared to 45% for the original configuration. However, in some scenes we actually sacrifice a bit from peak brightness, especially in the absolute lowest APL scenes, though this isn't always the case, it can depend on the exact content. This allows for some of the highest APL scenes to be significantly brighter, such as video scene 4 which goes from 260 nits to 388 nits, a 50% improvement. You'll also notice here that brightness performance is very similar to the Aorus FO32U2P using its HDR game mode, though if anything the new ASUS setting is actually a bit better for reducing the effects of dimming. With that said, neither model offers good accuracy in this configuration, in fact enabling this method of operation causes a big hit to Delta E performance, especially for dim scenes. Effectively, this is a compromised solution. It's potentially useful for people that want better brightness in bright scenes without sacrificing a thousand nits of brightness in dark scenes, which might be the best way to experience brighter games. However, it's not a setting that fixes the issues with the Peak 1000 and True Black modes on QD OLED gaming monitors. It's still not possible to have strong accuracy, a thousand nits of peak brightness, and no panel dimming in bright scenes simultaneously. You have to sacrifice one of those things in each available mode. But I like the choice. 
It's better to give users a choice than to not offer the option for those that might want it. And just by reading reports from people, they do want this mode. This also keeps the PG32 UCDM very competitive with the Aorus FO32U2P, which did offer this configuration previously as, I guess, kind of an exclusive feature. With that said, I'd still like to see future QD OLED panels eliminate this performance issue and give us an uncompromised 1000 nit experience. It's probably something that Samsung Display will need to address given the inability of the monitor makers to fully solve it through firmware tweaks so far. Generally though, this new firmware update for the PG32 UCDM doesn't change much in terms of how it's positioned against other 4K QD OLED gaming monitors. It's nice to get Dolby Vision support and the Dynamic Brightness Boost option, extending the ASUS model's lead as the most feature-rich variant, though for a typical PC gamer, it's probably not going to be the difference maker. Most of the available options are very well calibrated, deliver excellent performance, and come with a great set of features. The MSI or Dell models are still the cheapest in most regions, and the Gigabyte model is still the only one with DisplayPort 2.1. There's something for everyone across the various models. But anyway, that's a look at the ASUS PG32 UCDM with the latest firmware, version MCM105. I still have this ASUS monitor, so I thought I'd bring it out of storage, give it a little test, see what it brings. And obviously with these two new features, there's some things to talk about. So hopefully you've all appreciated this video. If you do want to support our independent testing that we do here at Monitors Unboxed and Hardware Unboxed, we do have our Patreon and Floatplan accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You'll gain access to some cool benefits like our Discord community, which is a great place to chat about monitors and a few of you there did warn me, or at least not warn me, but let me know about this firmware update. So that was good to see. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.